We're about to time travel back to other worlds where different creatures ruled the seas, different animals flew in the skies. We're going to step back all the way to the first creatures that put oxygen in the air and from there the flourishing of life began. So let's step back in time. This beautiful piece of tiger iron, called tiger iron for the very obvious stripes, was actually made from stromolites and these are more than two billion years old, these tiny bacteria that were the first organisms that produced oxygen in our atmosphere. So before that, there was no possibility for the complexity of life that we see now. And what's happened here is that molecule by molecule, they've been replaced by this very bright golden jasper and the reds of the iron. And that's what gives it this beautiful color. It's stunning, isn't it? It looks like a work of art. In fact, it looks like a flower. But this, even though it's called a sea lily, it was not a plant at all. It's actually a filter feeder from the same family as sea urchins and starfish. And it used to hang from the flotsam in the Jurassic, which is how it was so beautifully preserved. And it would float along, filter feeding tiny little organisms from the depths. And the flotsam itself has been preserved here. Really beautiful. Crocodile from the Jurassic, and these are one of the success stories. So dinosaurs died out in the great mass extinction, but crocodiles survived. And the reason they survived is, is hotly debated, but perhaps it's because they were cold-blooded and we think dinosaurs were probably hot-blooded. So cold-blooded creatures can cope with less food and they were able to survive the great asteroid impact and the climate change that followed by staying in murky ponds and rivers. You can really see that the crocodile shape has barely changed since the Jurassic. It's really quite extraordinary. Oh, these are incredible. So evocative. Tell me about these pterodactyls. So yeah, we have two pterosaurs from the Jurassic. So they're about 150 million years old. So these are essentially years. flying lizards. Yeah, absolutely. The real Jurassic Park. So here we have a Rampharynchus. It's incredibly complete. Most fossils that you find are fragmentary. This one is about 98% complete. So you, you can see the delicate structure of the bones that would have helped it be so light for flight. And then it's very fearsome teeth that would have helped it to grab fish out of the ocean when it dived. It's beautiful. And, and in this one, I can see the tail bones are there. Yeah, absolutely. And it is incredibly rare, Germanodactylus. There are only four of these known in museums around the world. And the way that I knew what this was is there's a very distinctive head crest on it. It would have been this wonderful bit of headgear on top of the, the pterosaur in it. They're beautiful, so evocative of a completely different world. So this looks like a dolphin, but it's actually a reptile. It's ichthyosaur, isn't it? It is a fast swimmer, top predator. Vicious sharp teeth for uh, catching its Jurassic prey. Here we have some of the stomach contents. In between its ribs, see the little hooks of a squid-like creature called a belemnite that it would have eaten. And coincidentally, the shell of one of these animals seems to be sitting atop the corpse of this ichthyosaur. It's a very visual, beautiful piece. 